This time we're talking about 18 things we don't love so much about our Tesla Model 3. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a car that we've absolutely been loving and I'm convinced that this is one of the best cars on the road right now, which is crazy considering that they've just done another big price drop here in Australia. But this is a video where I get to be a little bit fussy, a little bit nitpicky, and talk about some areas where there might be room for improvement, and also let you know if you're interested in buying a Tesla, here's some of the downsides. They're not deal breakers by any means, but it's just good to know some of the areas that maybe need some improvement. Number one is that there's only one reverse light on this car. On the left hand side, you've got that tiny little reverse light and given that this is a silent car, from a safety point of view, I think that we should have the most visibility when you are reversing. We've had countless times where pedestrians have walked right in front of the car because it's completely silent, right? And people are used to hearing an engine noise. I know some of the international Model 3s do have both reverse lights turned on. I'm not sure why here in Australia, we've just got the one on the left hand side. Number two is phantom braking. Now, if you're using autopilot in this car, let's say you're on a highway and there's a really dark shadow on the road, sometimes the camera system will think that that's a hazard and start to apply the brakes. It's a little bit freaky when it happens the first few times. We've kind of gotten used to it now in the sense that we'll just put our foot straight back on the accelerator, let the car know that it's okay to proceed. But hoping this is something that gets better through software updates just because it's a little bit unsettling when the car starts to brake for you. Number three is that the Model 3 actually has quite heavy steering. Now, when we compare this to all the other cars that we've driven recently, the Model 3 is by far the heaviest. You can go into the settings and change it from sport steering to comfort steering, but we still find that the comfort is a little bit heavier than what we would like. Number four is that cruise control accelerates to the wrong speed limit sometimes. So the car is constantly checking those speed signs on the road. If it doesn't recognize them correctly, it may sometimes get the speed wrong. So let's say you go to engage cruise control, you're in an 80 zone, but the car thinks that you're in a 100 zone, it's gonna start accelerating. Now, it's quick to fix, obviously, put your foot straight on the brake, disengage cruise control, but it's just a good thing to keep in mind. I've gotta get in the habit of checking that little speed sign on the touchscreen to make sure that the car knows the correct speed limit. Number five is that people don't know how to use the door handles. Now, admittedly, as I spoke about on my last video, the door handles are a little bit tricky at first go. The problem that I have here though is is when you don't know how to use the door handle, you might be wearing jewelry, rings, you might have a handbag on you, and through those multiple attempts of trying to open the door, it can result in some hairline scratches around the door handle. So I've now got into the habit of literally getting out of the car, opening the door for someone, and showing them how to use the door handle. Number six is that the touchscreen can actually be quite tricky to use while you're driving. Now in a conventional car, you're used to those tactile buttons that you can use without needing your eyesight, right? So hopefully with the improvements in voice control over time, this is something where you just get to keep your eyes on the road. Number seven is that the automatic windscreen wipers are a little bit hit and miss in the Model 3. Often we'll find it starts raining. The problem here is that there's no easy way to turn them on. Um, you have to go through the touch controls, which can sometimes feel a little bit unsafe if you're taking your eyes off the road. There is a button at the end of the left stalk that will swipe once when you've pushed it in, but that doesn't allow you to control the speed settings very well. Number eight is that we've been struggling to get the temperature comfortable in the car. Now, I'm not sure if this is because there's no conventional air vents in the Tesla Model 3, or I'm not sure if it's because of the double glazing. It definitely feels different to a normal car where you can sort of get comfortable a little bit quicker, but maybe we just need to spend a bit more time getting used to the aircon system in the car. Number nine is that there's no automatic open or close for the frunk. Now, as I said in my last video, we are using the frunk just as much as the boot. It's a really awesome space but you do have to manually open and close it with your hands. It may be for safety reasons that Tesla has chosen not to do this, but I do know that there's several people modding their cars and adding this feature to them on the aftermarket. So I'd be interested to see if Tesla do add this in future cars. Number 10 is the false alerts you sometimes get when driving on autopilot. Now, this is a car with heaps of safety features and it's always better to be on the cautious side, right? But sometimes you'll be driving on autopilot and a car will cut 
car in front of you at a safe distance. As a normal driver, you're probably not gonna brake, but autopilot sees this and it freaks out. And what that results in is obviously heavy braking of the car, some really jarring loud noises. So now like even for things like pedestrians or cyclists, the car will sometimes freak out, right? So it's better to just disengage autopilot, which we've been doing more often now. If we see something that we think is a hazard, we'll just turn it off. Number 11 is the fees you get for not moving your car at a supercharger. So once your car has fully charged, Tesla want you to move it so other cars can come in and charge up. Makes perfect sense. I actually think it's really smart. It does create a bit of anxiety though. Every time you go to a supercharger and you go to grab a coffee or something, you're worried that you're gonna start incurring these fees if your car does charge. And thanks to superchargers being so quick these days, we normally get the charge that we need within like 15 to 20 minutes. So we're finding it's better to just sit in the car and then unplug it, move it to a normal park. We can go about enjoying our day. Number 12 is not Tesla's fault, but it is a reality of owning an electric car. And that is changing between your electric car and a conventional car. This is something that has really thrown us off. We own a 2014 Mazda CX-5. When we get in that car to drive it anywhere, it takes us a hot minute to get used to the different setup. Number 13 is that you actually have to pay for any connectivity. So when you first pick up your Tesla, you get a free trial period where you can use Netflix, YouTube, all those things like Spotify. But after that trial period ends, you realize that you can't use all those features anymore. You need to pay the subscription fee, which is in Australia about 10 to $12 a month, I believe. Number 14 is that there's no blind spot monitoring in the mirrors themselves. Instead, what you are gonna get is on that touch screen, you'll be able to see if there's a car to your left or right. So you just need to get in the habit of looking down at the touch screen before you go to indicate. And admittedly, if you do try to indicate and move into a lane where there's someone in your blind spot, the car will warn you. I wish that there was just a little indicator in the mirror because by the time you've gone to indicate and started to move, you've already upset the car next to you. Number 15 is that there's no manual handle for the glove box. Now this is an example where Tesla may have taken the minimalist interior a little bit too far. You actually have to go into the settings on the touchscreen to open up the glove box. Number 16 is that there's no door frame around the windows. People will close the door using the window itself and not the door. And I actually love the look of the door design without that frame, it looks super sleek. But a tip that I learned from a friend online is that you can actually just put the window down before someone gets out of the car. And as soon as you lock your Tesla, those windows are gonna go straight back up. Number 17 is the poorly maintained destination chargers. Now this is a reality of owning a Tesla, at least in Australia at the moment, when you travel out to various destination chargers, and these are chargers that are not owned by Tesla, but businesses that will install them to try and attract more customers. But they don't look after them all the time, and sometimes they don't even work. And it can be frustrating when you're doing country driving, you make a specific stop at a destination charger and they haven't been looked after at all. Number 18 is that you don't get any alerts on your phone when sentry mode is is detecting something. So if something dodgy is happening around your car, I was expecting that you would get notified that there's something suspicious. Maybe they'd send a photo or a short video of the activity around your car. I guess that was wishful thinking because you don't get notified at all unless your entire car alarm goes off, which allegedly is very hard to set off an alarm in a Tesla Model 3. And that brings me to a positive note to finish the video, is that this car is constantly getting software updates over the Wi-Fi, which means that this car is constantly improving. But be sure to check out the things we do love about our Tesla in our previous video, 40 small details we love about our Tesla Model 3. I also have some exciting new videos that I've been working on, so please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. And I'll also link below a podcast episode I did talking all about my Tesla delivery experience here in Melbourne.